everyone, welcome back to Motorcycle.com. Today we have a very special bike, at least to me. It's the 2024 Suzuki GSX-8R. It is the, the continuation of the 800cc platform from Suzuki. Suzuki's first all new platform in a long, long time. Of course, it all started with the 8S, then went to the V-Strom, and now it is in this form with a fairing and an R on the side. I say it's a special bike for me personally because I've been a long time owner of an SV650. It's what I got my start on. It's how I, it's the bike I learned everything on. And in fact, I just sold it like two weeks ago from the moment I'm filming this video. So it's still very fresh in my head and it was a first generation SV650. So I've had the bike for 20 odd years. So I've watched the path of the SV grow from its infancy to today. And even though that bike is still around and Suzuki is still making it, the 800 platform, the way I mean by it follows that trajectory is humble beginnings that can kind of do it all, morphing into different versions that can then be tailored and specialized for whatever you want to do. And this latest version, the 8R, encapsulates that ethos. Of course, it all starts right here in the middle with the 776 cc parallel twin with the 270 degree offset firing order which gives it a really cool exhaust note uh, it's versatile it's playful it doesn't have too much power but it has enough torque and it has torque really down low where you want it to make it fun playful and give off those same vibes that the sv carried all those years ago of just instant torque when you need it and then all that power up top when you want it without getting too crazy. As far as the engine tuning is concerned, it's the exact same spec as the 8S, same power, same torque, same everything. Uh, it also has the bi-directional quick shifter on it for up and down shifts. In my experience today on our street ride with the 8R, this bike, up shifts were fantastic. Super slick, super smooth. Down shifts, not quite the same story little notchy um, when used in conjunction with the clutch, which obviously defeats the purpose of a bi-directional quick shifter, then you get really smooth and uh, efficient downshifts. I prefer to use the clutch in conjunction with the quick shifter just to get that extra little smoothness going, but small potatoes, really. Moving forward is where you'll find a lot of the differences between the R and the S model, and obviously the V-Strom as well. Clearly you've got the full fairing. The obvious styling difference between the naked bike, the S model, and the fully fared one, the R model. You can see the resemblance in the family, but you can also tell that uh, this is a more sport-oriented bike. Suzuki's whole ethos around the 8R was to build a a throwback of sorts with with the sport bike genre in particular a bike in the old days a bike that could still go fast and do sporty things but not be totally just torture on your lower back on your wrist without a position that put your arms down here the handlebars are a little bit higher than the clip-ons for a nice comfortable sitting position that's about i think it was three mil lower than the 8s so you're still forward facing, but not so extremely forward as a GSX-R, for example. It proved to be, in my opinion, spot on. Uh, just enough forward tilt to get that sporty juices flowing, but not so much to where you couldn't wait to hop off the thing. The seat, nice and plush, good cushioning on it. We rode, I don't know, 200 some odd miles today. My butt feels as crisp as can be, which uh, is a testament to a stock seat because uh, I don't always say that about stock seats. But again, as we move forward, this fairing design and along with the little bit more forward facing controls of the R put more, as we were told yesterday in the tech briefing, put more load on the front tire. And so Suzuki had to revise its suspension settings from the 8S to the 8R. The change became a, a straight rate spring rate that's a little bit softer than the 8S. The valving has changed for a little bit firmer damping than the 8S. There is no adjustability in the uh, Showa separate function big piston fork that's on this bike. But honestly, for normal road riding and even sporty road riding, it was more than up to the task. Tomorrow, we're gonna go to the racetrack and uh, put this thing through its paces at a more spirited uh, tempo, which may or may not stress this suspension setup to the max. I'll let you know in the next part of this video. 
Uh, as we continue forward, you have the TFT display here that's the same as the 8S. The headlights are clearly different because fully fared versus not. Um, really cool, really tiny LED lights that project a lot of light. Really cool design there. Uh, like I said before, it's the Showa separate function big piston fork. That's different from the uh, 8S's forks. Nissan radial calipers with four pistons, 310 millimeter discs, really nice stopping power. Me being me, I would have preferred more aggressive brake pads just for that extra little bite, but I'm picky that way. For a lot of people, it's not gonna make a difference. And that's really the, the meat and potatoes of the differences of this bike from the 8S. So, as I mentioned before, we spent today riding on the street. It was frigid cold this morning. It was also wet, so we didn't necessarily go hog wild riding this thing because we were freezing cold and the roads were wet. But it was a good chance to test the electronics. There's different ride modes, there's traction control, and honestly, I left it at the weakest traction control and the most aggressive throttle mapping, and it was totally fine. In fact, the throttle mapping in the A mode, which is the most aggressive, is super, super clean. By that I mean the relation between how much I turn the throttle to how much power is going to the back wheel is right where I expected it to be. Telepathic is kind of the word I was going for there. Predictable, smooth, linear. Other bikes I've ridden, you turn the throttle and you get nothing, 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 and then bam, the power hits in because it's trying to be too conservative. This in the A mode, was right where I wanted it to be. It wasn't too snatchy, but it wasn't too conservative either. Right, proper fueling, even down low in the rev range. Uh, really, I had no reason to switch to the lower modes because I liked it just the way it was. Thank goodness I didn't need to test the traction control. We never got these things spinning up like crazy, so uh, I'm just gonna assume it works just fine. Hopefully tomorrow we'll, at the racetrack, uh, we'll have more of a chance to really test those limits and, and figure that out from there. But yeah, the TFT display is super crisp, super clean, really easy to read. Engine has power down low, it has nice power up top. It's uh, just a fantastic street motorcycle. Uh, I think I'll hold the rest of my thoughts right there because we still have one more component to go. So the next time I talk to you, we'll be at the racetrack. And I'll see you there. And here we are at the racetrack, Chuckwalla Valley Raceway. Uh, this is obviously a different bike than you just saw in the street version, but I am still riding that yellow one that you just saw. Um, I've done, I don't even know how many laps around here on various bikes. Uh, just did a whole bunch of laps on the GSX-8R and a couple of things stood out. One, I did, I drained this gas tank. I did a whole entire session uh, with a full tank of gas, running it completely to empty, and for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to see if I could do it. Two, Suzuki says this bike is supposed to be balanced, easy to ride, and the sport bike that isn't so sport bike-like, meaning it's not so committed and not going to wreck your back. I'm happy to say that this bike does achieve those things, and I was able to pull it off, which was kind of surprising. Um, this might be, I was saying it earlier to some people over there, this might be the first bike I've ridden an entire complete tank of gas on in one go that never made my hands go numb. Um, a lot of times just engine vibrations, especially when you're revving the crap out of it at track speeds, will eventually, after 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it is, eventually will make your hands go just a little numb or have some tingles going on. Not on this bike, man. Uh, Suzuki has a patented two counterbalancer system. I don't know if that was the reason why, but it surely didn't hurt. Um, just smooth, really, really smooth. And I go back to the word balance. Everything from front to back on this bike stock, really balanced. The, the power the engine makes doesn't overwhelm the suspension, doesn't overwhelm the brakes either. However, once you start adding power to this engine, 
I think that's gonna be the point where the suspension is gonna be overwhelmed. And I don't think it's gonna take a lot of power to overwhelm either end of the suspension. Uh, but then you're getting into some next level stuff. And if you've committed to making more power on this thing to go to the racetrack, I'd say you should also save some pennies to look into some suspension upgrades as well to equalize that balance between engine suspension and the brakes, which will also need a little bit of help if you were gonna make this thing go faster. Uh, number one complaint, these foot pegs, these peg feelers come down real fast, especially here at Chokwalla. Um, we weren't allowed to take them off, but obviously you could if it was your bike. The seating position, my butt hits the back seat here pretty quickly when trying to scoot, so I feel really, really cramped. I already know there are some race teams working on a, a new subframe or just a new seat for the back here that's got a more a flatter profile so full-size adults can scoot back in that racer position much much better just overall impressions though balance balance and easy to ride the engine it's that same thing where it makes the torque and makes its power really early in the rev range so a lot of these corners here at Chugwalla you're carrying some maintenance throttle and if you want to add a little bit of power to start your exit on the corner you can start dialing in one two three four five percent of the throttle and there's actual power there to start moving you forward it revs pretty slowly which can be a good or a bad thing um, it's good because if things start to go out of hand like say your tires are starting to wear and you're feeling some slipping going on this slow revving nature of the engine will allow you the time to react and maybe let off the throttle a little bit and save that slide. It's bad because if you're trying to you know, pass somebody or overtake someone or you know feel that need for speed, it may not deliver those sensations. Same complaints as the street. Uh, the quick shifter, pretty much useless on downshifts, especially on the track setting. Upshifts, no problem. Chagwala is not really a track that's hard on brakes, so I have to save my impressions on the brakes for a uh, more, tr more braking heavy racetrack. On paper, this is kind of a heavy bike, but yeah, overall, easy to ride. Easy to ride and balanced, especially here in stock form. They did put Dunlop Q5 tires on this, but otherwise it's a stock bike. Just easy, easy, easy. Balanced, balanced, balanced. I can't wait to see what a bunch of race teams are gonna do with this thing. Once this thing is built up, it's gonna be a super fun bike. You could definitely use some more power up top. You can start to feel it lose steam up top, but you gotta get it pretty high in the revs before you lose steam. The gearing, especially here for Chugwalla, is spot on. It's so quiet that you think you need to downshift more than you need to but uh, you can keep it in a higher gear. And when you look at the tack, you're right in the meat of the power. So it's really deceiving how torquey this engine is, which is good because less shifts mean less distractions and more chances for you to go fast. The real test will be to see how it stacks up against the competition. But uh, if you're looking for a do-it-all sport bike that's sporty and looks cool and goes well, and if I'm sure if once you put a pipe on this thing, it'll sound great too. Uh, I'm really digging this GSX-8R. Again, as a former SV owner, maybe I'm biased. I've followed that progression of that bike since the beginning. I really see a lot of those same shades in the GSX-8R, um, which just means if the SV could be tuned up to be a super cool bike, one of these is gonna be tuned up to be a super cool bike too. And all of that for 9,500 bucks. Considering the, the, the prices for sport bikes these days, this seems like a relative bargain and it is on par with the competition price-wise. R7 is right there in that range. The new Daytona 660 is right there in that range. The RS660 is considerably higher. Uh, so yeah, we are playing in a very even ballpark price-wise, which obviously means it's time for a shootout to happen. Hopefully we can put that on real soon. But uh, that's it for the evaluation and first ride of the 2024 Suzuki GSX-8R. As always, there will be a written supplement on Motorcycle.com. There you'll find uh, my written words, a lot more pictures, probably some graphs, charts, uh, detail shots of the bike. 
a lot more things and a chance for me to really download my brain into the written form. So go check that out. There'll be a link to that below. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good time to be back in the sport bike game because the options are getting cooler and cooler now. They're getting more accessible too. So uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching everyone. Again, go read the written portion at motorcycle.com. And as always, ride safe and we'll see you later.